I want to say good evening to everyone that is listening and watching on Facebook Live. This afternoon on Bell's Video and Audio Services Podcast, our subject tonight that we're going to talk about is Black on Black Crime. I have heard the statement that there's no such a thing as black on black crime. Crime is just crime. And that might be true to a certain point. It depending on where you're standing. It depending on who's standing. And it depending on who's taking a part in the crime. So this afternoon I have two wonderful guests. And I'm going to pause for a moment to give each one of my guests, my panelists, to just kind of give me a small bio of each of you. Just kind of introduce yourself to the audience. And we're going to start with Dr. James Hill this time, and then we will move up to Mr. Chili Cook, Dr. Hill. Uh, yes, I'm Dr. James I'm Originally from a little small town, Roanoke, Alabama. Spent 20 years in the military. Have also spent now 20 years in the federal government service. And I've been a minister since 1998. I was licensed in Roanoke, Alabama also by uh, Bishop Wright. And so I'm just happy to be here today. And I want to thank you, uh, Dr. James Hill, for accepting the invitation to come on and to talk on this subject that is need to be talked about because we cannot and we got to quit uh, taking a blind eye to the situation and what's happening in our community. Now we look at this and, and we see it taking place in the metropolitan cities large cities all over the country. But whatever happened in big cities, it trickled down to small cities and towns like the one I live in. Because I realized that uh, Dr. Hill, you live in a, a large uh, city, but you are raised and were born in the same city that I live in now. So we got to talk about not on a, on a big level, but on a small scale in small cities of crime called crime do not discriminate. Dr. Cook. Hey, uh, I'm Stan Chili Cooks. I'm, I'm born and raised in Union Springs, Alabama. And um, I think you all knew my big brother, yeah. Reverend Eugene Cooks. Y'all knew my brother. But anyway, yeah, and I was a, I've, I've been a part of city government and I went to Alabama State, I was a drum major. I pledged some fraternities, Omega Psi Phi, Kappa Kappa Psi, and Akindelos. I pledged those fraternities, and I'm the founder and director for Chili's High School Band. It's a, it's a after school music program for kids ages five to 17, and it's free. And I just started a new chapter in Tuskegee. So now I got two chapters, one in Union Springs and one is in Tuskegee. Right. Thank right. you, uh, thank you, Dr. Cook, for sharing that with us. And uh, I have been knowing for quite some time. We have met up over the year, over the past year, in different cities in the state of Alabama uh, as local elected official for so many years. But right. now, we are here this afternoon to talk on a subject for dealing with black on black crime. I am very concerned about black on black crime. I'm concerned about black individuals in general. And what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing in, I'm on deal with our local small town uh, just recently, just the past few years, seem like the, the killing, Blacks on Black killing, it become, look like a everyday thing 
at times that people don't care no more, care about each other no more. So I'm going to talk about that. We're going to have to talk about it in order to find a solution to it. We got to talk about it. We got to do mm -hmm. this out with it. We just can't keep holding this back and kind of taking a taking the uh, closing our eyes to it because it's happening. I think one of the problems is that until it walk up in our front door, then we can talk about it. I don't want to wait that time. I want to be proactive. Don't wait to, and start to be to react. I want to be proactive before something happens. So let us start with uh, uh, Dr. Cook. I want to start with you first and give me your uh, say your outlook on black on black crime and some of the things that we could do and and is it true? Okay, well, we can't talk about the black and black on black crime unless we talk about the cause and effect. Okay, uh, you know it comes from someplace, and unfortunately, uh, our people are always being used to further another agenda. They okay. always seem to use us, for instance, and I said that to say. The music, the music industry, mm -hmm. uh, uh, right now, say like if those super groups that we grew up with, Confunction, or uh, uh, Cameo, or uh, uh, Temptations, all of them come out right now, they wouldn't be able to get played on the radio. Okay. Because the only music that's getting through and getting on playlists it's got to glorify something. It's got to glorify greed, or it's got to glorify killing. It's got to glorify uh, calling our ladies out of their names, and it's got to glorify us just not liking each other. Mm -hmm. And that's that's done on purpose. It's like they use number one. They they hijacked rap music, hip hop music. You know, back in our day, when I was in college and rap was first coming out, they were to the hip, the hop, the hippie to the hip, the hip, hip, the hop, you mm -hmm. it was fun. Mm -hmm. And now that kind of rap is considered whack by a lot of the kids. And you got to be talking about gang bang, actually. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. see, the gangs have taken over and they're using the music, you know, Life evolves around vibrations okay. and, um, you know, harmonics and stuff. And they using that low sub harmonic bass. They using that. And our kids are hypnotized before the first words are spoken. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, it's, it's almost, a, it, it, it's like, they go from high school, start listening to all of that stuff, and they end up in jail. Or either their minds, if you combine the music with all of these video games that we that we have babysitting our kids, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto and all of these things, all of these all these violent games, and our kids have become numb to the fact of death is final you know the final the the finality of death they've become numb to it and it's like it's not a video game and you can't just blast somebody and they're going to get up and you'll see them again the next day mm -hmm. see our kids are not thinking about that and they're glorifying the guns and the shooting and all of that stuff in all of the music and tv mm -hmm. so it's like we almost have to put a a fence around our kids just to send them out to be amongst other kids. And that's a cycle and we need to break that cycle. And until we own more uh, radio stations or, you know, until we own more of those and we can play a better selection of music, because right now, if your song can't play, can't make the playlist, it won't get played and nobody can hear it. And if you're talking about anything too positive, they're yeah. not gonna let the we out of worlds go through anymore. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. Those types of things. 
And uh, let me ask you this, uh, Chilla. Yeah. Look like we glorify uh, in killing each other as black men and, and ladies, especially black men. And they've been told me, well, they need they need something to do. Let me, let me share it with you. If I'm, if I'm 35 or 40 years old, I'm no longer a kid. Right. I need something. What I need is me a job and I'll be working, trying to better my life, trying to make things better. You, you ain't got time to be worried about that. I need some reparation. I don't need no reparation. I got, I'm 40 years old. I done passed all that. Right. You need job training. I, that's right. So <laughs> sometimes we will holler, well, if they had something to do it. A grown man, 40 some years old, or even 30 something, you're 30. You need to be beyond that. But see, see, Matt, the problem is they're using things like an ankle, an ankle bracelet as a badge of honor. Uh -huh. You know, do you know how backwards that is? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, I've been to prison, so I'm the man. I can, okay. you, you know, that kind of stuff. And they really got us, they got, they got our little boys messed up. Okay. You know? Okay. They, they do, see, because they got them thinking that everything bad is good. Okay. Everything that was bad when we were growing up is now good. Okay, you know? okay. It's like, okay. The, it's like the bad kids in class took over the whole school, if you know. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm gonna ask you this, Chili, before I move to Dr. Hill, I'm gonna ask you this, Jim. What, what it gonna take? Now, see, I've never been a part of a game. Right. But it's have trickled down to a city as a population of 6,500 and less. Uh, you, you hear about gangs in big cities, metropolitan cities, but now we're in little town. So why is it that the young people is getting in game? Is that a reason? Well, see, they're getting engaged because they feel it's peer pressure, number one, peer pressure. And the other thing, they feel family. Uh, yeah, yeah, see, they, they make them feel like it's a family, you know? And I really don't know how to get them away from that mindset, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, we got to learn uh, at the peak periods, for instance, like we always turn a blind ear to the gangs and all that stuff. See, these kids don't even know what a gang is. The gangs were started to protect neighborhoods, not run the neighborhood. They were, they were started to protect neighborhoods mm -hmm. and they, they kind of got misconstrued. And they thinking it's our turf, is our turf, and they turn it into something like that when they really, they really don't understand. And the older people, we gotta learn when they're having initiation periods. See, that's mm -hmm. when all of the real craziness happens during initiation periods. For instance, I don't know, I don't know if either one of you plays or something, but. You know, I play as Omega Sci-Fi. And so one, one time we had we had to go out and they called it a panty raid, but we had to go and ask the little girl, we had to go and ask the girls on campus for panties. Now see, and then you know, you come back and you you collect as many as you can. But I'm saying these little boys, especially the ones that you see put a little dot under their eye. If you see somebody with a dot or a teardrop under their eye, that means that they've participated in or murdered somebody. That's a badge of honor. And see, we have to find out when they're having initiation periods. When they have initiation periods, sometimes they're told to go out and I want you to steal the first white car that you see. I want you to shoot the second person that you see with a baseball cap on stupid stuff, simple stuff like that, but those are 
their instructions that they, they have, you know, they give them those instructions to go out and chaos, you know? Yeah, chaos. And that's what they do. Or, or I need you to go down Johnson Street and I need you to break into the eighth house on the right. <laughs> you know, just something. And they have to do it, you know, to prove themselves. And that's what I'm saying. They got our little boys all and the girls too. Now the girls are just as bad as the boys. Now the girls got gangs also. The girls are just as bad as the boys. As a matter of fact, the girls are leading a lot of the boys <laughs> into stuff, you know? Seriously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know? Yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. I, yeah. Thank you, okay. Now we're gonna go down to Dr. James Hill and give your respect on with Dr. Hill. Well, Brother Bell, one of the things that I see that really was to break up the families. Mm -hmm. When the enemy got involved and he began to tell the little girl that, hey, you be bad by yourself. Mm -hmm. And so you're trying to get a mother trying to teach a boy how to be a man. Oh, That's hard to do. Oh, okay. And so these little boys now don't have nobody to turn to other than someone that's in a game. Mm -hmm. And so they go to the game they're looking for love. Well, just like a bully, you got to think about a bully. A bully only has power over you as long as you allow him. When you strike back at a bully, he'll leave you alone. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a game. You got to think about games. Is, they own the problem is they say we got the guns. Nobody's in the neighborhood got guns. We got the power. We intimidate people. But once the people in the neighborhood decide that, you know what? I'm tired of this. I got to take my neighborhood back. And so once the people decided they want to take the neighborhood back, whether they have to arm themselves or whether or not they'll stand up to the gangs, the gangs are not going to leave until someone is bigger than them. Mm -hmm. And in some instances, yeah, you have to arm yourself. You have more guns than them in order to get them out. But it's all about, do you really want to take your neighborhood back? Okay. The other thing we have is that we have a lot of churches too that are in these neighborhoods, but they're not reaching out wow. to those families in the neighborhood, trying to help them out. We just come in on nice little cars, nice little suit. We're having a good time. As soon as service is over, we leave out. But we don't leave nothing in that neighborhood to help that neighborhood or to reach out to that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. When I was in Philadelphia, we had an outreach where we actually went into the gang's neighborhood. And we had, yeah. we, we talked with the gang members and then tried to get them to convert over and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. We had a few that converted. Okay. But we actually went into the neighborhood. I mean, we prayed about it and we said, well, we know we're going in. We don't know if we're going to get shot or not, but yet we got to go in and try something. Right. Mm -hmm. And so until we as a people realize that we are harming ourselves, that's why sometimes when people say, well, I say, every time there's a police that kills a black man, we can rally real quick. But every time a black man kills a black man or a black man kills seven black men, nobody says anything. That's right. Just like mm -hmm. this week, we lost the other day a 15-year-old, a 17-year-old, a 14-year-old. All got shot and killed. Mm -hmm. But does anybody say anything around here now? No. It's quiet. Yes, the mom and dad, they miss the kid. They, they get ready to prepare for funerals and stuff. But nobody is saying, well, how can we stop what's going on in this neighborhood? Or how can we stop all the young kids, young kids from getting killed? We, use, we, we get, I think, every day at least one young kid is in this uh, city gets shot or killed. Mm -hmm. Every day. Every day. Yeah. Now, you, you said something then that the church, when you say the church, you're talking about all of us, not, not the building, the church. We are no. the church. We are the church. So we need to go in to these communities, to these uh, the situations that's going on and try to uh, convert them through the word. Yes. Uh, the problem is that we, do we need to be trained how to go into them communities Yes. Whole lot of time, we, we sometimes we say because I got a title, 
of Dr. Doolittle, uh, Reverend Doolittle, that I'm qualified right off the bat to go in the community and try to bring the people out of that mess. But I ain't, got, but I ain't been trained. I ain't got no know-how. So I will do more harm to going in now without being trained. So what we need to do about it, do we need to be trained or uh, uh, what? We have to be trained, but the, the best thing to do is we find people that are in the neighborhood, you talk with them, they will let you know how to, you know, get in and talk to other people because you got, you just can't walk in the neighborhood and think you're going to get them saved or whatever. The idea is just to get in and get in and talk and try to meet them where they are. Okay. You see, one thing my, one of my professors told me says, uh, he says, uh, you can't eat fish or clean. I mean, you can't eat fish or cook a fish until you clean the fish. <laughs> so until you get in there and clean the fish, you can't, you can't, you know, you can't eat the fish. Mm -hmm. Do you know, I think I like that what you said about the fish. <laughs> uh, when it comes to like the church, now, a lot of these little boys been Jesus to death. Okay. They've been Jesus out. They've been, they've been Jesus to death. And it's like, they do need saving. They do need to know the word. Mm -hmm. But see, you got to look at what you're coming up against now. You're coming up, you're going up against some little boys that told me, uh, your generation grew up working hard. Our generation grows up working smart. So you all out there, you have to work two weeks to get a thousand dollars, Mr. Cook. That's what they told me. You have to yeah. work. Two, you have to work two weeks to get a thousand dollars, Mr. Cook. I can take my car and race from the car wash to the Mexican restaurant for a thousand dollars in five minutes. That's kind of hard to go up against. That that mentality. See, they get quick money, fast money, mm -hmm. and they're on a y'all. They're on a whole nother plane from us. And I'm I'm not saying that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's a com they're confused because they don't believe in working. They don't believe in saving. They don't believe <laughs> they don't believe in that. Mm -hmm. And how do we get through that? Now, we can take them to church all day, but that's all they're going to do. They're just going to listen at it. It's not going to resonate with them and stick with them. Mm -hmm. We got to come up with something that's going to stick with them. See, we got to, for instance, respect gets respect. You got to respect some of these little boys who already are entrepreneurs that's right. Some of the best in the world, they're already entrepreneurs. We just got to get them to understand, open up a business, do something legal, because you got the business mind. That's right. They you know what, though, bro? When I was in Philadelphia, what we did, because I used to work with youth that was in trouble. Yeah. And so one of the things we did is we sit down, we talk with them and find, like you said, what are they doing? What do they like to do? You find yeah. out what do they like to do. Yeah, we got them involved in the doing stuff. We got some of them turn around yeah. just by getting them involved and hooking them up with people that could get them into the business that they want to get into. Right. You want right. to make money. You want to make your big money. Hey, I know somebody else that knows somebody that can help you, and we get their mindset. You have to get their mindset changed to like, look, this is what I can do. Now you got to worry yeah. about trying to say, well, if I get that fast money, I got to well, I'm going to make the mark. Because with the fast money, you're living for the day. You don't even right. care about tomorrow. Right. But if you get that mindset change, look, you can make this money, but now you know you're living for today, but you're living for the future. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So but we see, have to get that mindset. We got, that's what I'm talking about. So we got to get into their mindset, and this goes so far beyond ours. I mean, we, you know, see, we still <laughs> stuck with common sense. These guys, I have no idea, man. <laughs> I, I'm serious, man. You know, because I'm a musician. And I have a son that's a musician in Atlanta. And he was saying, 
hey, Dad, what you made when you went out yesterday and played? I said, oh, man, that was a pretty good one, man. I got $700. He said, oh, you got $700. He said, watch this, Dad. He said, he pulled out his iPhone. This is no lie. He pulled out his iPhone, and he pulled up his little music app, and he said, watch this. He put a beat in, went to the microphone, wrapped on top of it, went to his Instagram or whatever and told everybody, download my song in 15 minutes. They download the song. He made $1,500 in less time than one hour. And he said, that's what I'm talking about, Dad. And I couldn't touch it. I couldn't, right. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't see <laughs> I couldn't say anything because he just made the money in front of me mm -hmm. and told me how easy it is for these little boys to make money. He said, we were, and then he said it too. So I said, this must be some of their stuff. We work smart, dad. You know, and I'm like, I, I didn't know what, I didn't even know how to come back behind it, you know, because I'm a musician. I went to school for music. I majored in music. I sit down and I play, or either I'm sitting down writing music. He didn't do none of that. He picked up his telephone, put a couple of drum beats in there, rapped on top of it about nothing. Mm -hmm. He was rapping about nothing. And he told those kids that downloaded. He said, I'm gonna sell it to you for a dollar and five cents. And they downloaded that thing for a dollar and five cents. And he showed me where he had made $1,500 in one hour. And I was like, my God. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, you know, we're old. That's all I have to say. We're old, but. We just have to get into the technology age. We got to like get said, We got to meet them where they are. That's why I said you got to get there. You have to talk with them, find out what are they doing, what do you want to do. Meet them where they are. Because in order to get them where we want them to be, we got to give them something positive and then they can see results from. And they already know that stuff. We just said, look, man, this is what you can do. This is how you can make some money. Yeah, yeah see, we got to get in there with them. We got to see how they're thinking. And, you know, we're able to adapt pretty good you know we can adapt pretty good but some of that stuff is psychedelic man right it, it is some of that stuff is psychedelic and you know it's like for instance they in my initial statement when i was saying about how they're using our kids see they are using hip-hop they launder they laundering money through hip-hop you know Mm -hmm. They're laundering money, drug money. They're doing everything, man. They're making so much money. But it's not going in the place. They're not doing anything. They're not opening up stuff, you know, training centers. Mm -hmm. I'm stuck on training centers because that's what can save all of them, man. If we had some free entrepreneurship classes for those guys that I was telling you already been in the they're already businessmen. They just don't know it. You know, they just don't know it. They're businessmen, and we could have another Black Wall Street, you know, if they woke up and right. stop being right. selfish. It's selfishness that's really getting them now. They got to wake up and say, oh, man, let's buy up all this stuff. You know, like they, they run around and they're complaining about the about the Asians with the nail shops and all this. Open up your own nail shop. Sell your own hair. I tell you what, sell your own blunts for your weed. You know, sell your own cigars. Mm -hmm. They just don't know. They're, and, and the frustration is taking over too. You know, they're mad, man. They're mad because they feel like they've been lied to so long. Hell, all of us been lied to, but you know, you, you got to You know what the biggest problem is, though, as far as the Black business is concerned, is that we have a lot of Black business that don't reach back and teach our young boys and girls how to get to where they are. Like you said, it's all about that mentality where it's all about me, 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 me. And you got to think about this it's a generation curse is what it is. And so yeah. what we need to do is to break this curse 
reach out, show these young black men that, hey, you know, we can have a black Wall Street. You guys are businessmen. You guys can be bankers. You guys can be on your own business, your own hair business, your own nail business. Like I said, we got to think like the Chinese do. When they come into a place, they keep their money in the neighborhood before it goes out. The Hispanics, too. The Hispanics, too, yes. They do the same thing. We use so we our problem is that we wanna we like to buy everything and we don't invest in nothing. Well, see, we used to we used to think like that, Doc. But see, our problem is now we're so busy trying to be accepted by whites. Mm -hmm. We're too, we are too busy trying to be accepted by whites. We listen to everything they say. I think it's more blacks in the country than they tell us. You know, mm -hmm. I think more, it's way more blacks than they tell us. They tell us we're the third on the totem pole now, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. See, so but you got you got to understand the reason behind that. Okay, you, say, you tell me something. You got this. What even this is what Trump said. You say if you tell a lie long enough, they'll believe. believe it. They'll believe. It. And so if I can tell you that you are number three in this country. You, you might be number one, number two, but if I tell you that you're number three, long you enough, believe it. yeah. If you tell me that long enough, I'm gonna eventually start believing. And oh. so, see, that's another one of their uh, problems that they're having with the critical race theory being taught in school and stuff. Because right now, they didn't have really, 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 really problems until these little white kids really learned about who the hell they are. <laughs> you know what yeah. I came from and how they got what they got and all of this stuff. See, they're learning this now and they're trying to stop it. You know, they don't want them to learn. They don't really want them to learn that Willie Lynch let us right. steal truth today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, more than everything. They don't even want them to even know about the Willie Lynch letter. Mm -hmm. You know? And see, all of that stuff comes into play, you know, like you said, they attacked the black family. They took, they took the men out of the equation. And now they want to, every time you turn the TV on now, my son won't even let his kids watch TV. Every time you turn on TV now, the face of the gay is black. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can be watching yeah. a great movie, man, and this dude, the dude is in the movie, and then you turn around, he's going to be gay. Or either the black female gotta be gay. And we are the face of, they're using us as the face of gay and putting us with that and putting their struggles akin to our struggles. And that's a lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a lie. You know, because, you know, if you go over to Africa with that mess, they, they, Oh, is it the Middle East? They liable to cut your head off. Yeah. You, you know that. You're right are. about that. And so, see, they're emasculating all of our little boys. All of our little boys, man. I got little boys in my band. And one day, they one little boy went in the bathroom. He was, he's in the, about the fourth grade. Maybe the, maybe the third grade. He was in the bathroom, so the door was cracked open. And I was in the kitchen and I was doing something in the kitchen and I looked and he was sitting on the toilet pier. And I was like, oh. So see, I didn't make a scene, but okay. you know, I did have to ease over there and say, hey man, are you doing number two? He said, no, sir. I said, oh, bless your heart. Cause I know he's he's imitating what he's seen mama. That's, that's right. Mm -hmm. He's imitating mama. And so, you know, from time to time, I will take the little boys and, hey, you know, and I just talk about little stuff like that. I don't embarrass them in front of everybody, but mm -hmm. they got to see how in the world can a woman tell you how to be a man? <laughs> a woman can't teach you how to be a man. It takes a man to teach you how to be a man. A woman can't teach a little boy to stand up and pee. You know? They, That's right. It's certain things a woman can't do. And you know, she needs a man around and we got millions of little boys running around here now with no male influence other than gangs. That's where they get all of that manhood from that they call manhood. They get it from the gangs. 
and the pants. I have never, ever heard a female say, oh my God, he looks so good with his pants hanging. I, I've never heard that. I've never heard a man say, oh my goodness, look at how pretty her long eyelashes are. <laughs> See, the women are wearing stuff to, to impress women and the little boys are sagging because that impresses guys. You mm -hmm. see how fast that is? <laughs> and that's what we're up against. And, and that is so true, uh, uh, Chile, and also Dr. Hill. And I'm going to go on right back into the part him is drive by shooting. We have a lot of that going on in our community now. Drive by shooting, killing. Sometimes innocent folks get caught up in the middle of drive-by shooting. Now, we have witnessed this all over the United States of America that, our, that more racial police officers have killed a lot of black men. Let me repeat that again. There have been more racial police that killed black men. And what I see now in small town that the city government, and this might be different places that they are hiring more racial police that have been rejected, have been rejected from other cities and some other government hire them reject because they are racial. And I believe the reason why they hire them is to strive the fact they can put the blacks in, in place. Well, well, see, they Yes, they are racist and all of that stuff. And it is a lot of, there's more black people getting killed than we know about. We only know about the ones that the news media cover. We don't know about those ones that swimming with the fish and all of that stuff. They just mysteriously disappear. But the police are a problem. And see, that's because we've given them too much power. See, Mac, you used to be on the city council. You know the police work for us. Mm -hmm. You know the police work for us. Mm -hmm. You know, tax dollars pay them. They are our servants. But we have elevated them to where like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. back, in, back in slavery days, officer, if you say officer real fast, officer, 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 you end up with overseer. <laughs> Just say you end, yeah. you end up with overseer. If you say it real fast, you know, and um Doc, you just said if you if you tell a lie long enough, they're gonna believe it. Yeah. Eventually they're gonna start believing it. And see, our kids just don't know the power that they have. Our kids, nobody's even telling them that when you get sick. If you go out and stand in the sun because of your melanin, that will recharge your whole body. But now they got us scaredy sun. That used to be our strength. That's what that's what got us through slavery. That's what actually that's the reason we became slaves because we could stand the sun. You know, don't nobody nobody ever like to talk about that. They like to say. See, the kids don't know who we are. If the kids really knew that black, the, those people with black skin back in the Egyptian days were so smart. We already knew calculus and all of that. So we were so smart that we had to be aliens. See, they would never say that the people that built the pyramids were black people. They like to say aliens did. But it were black people. I know some black people right now so smart, it's ridiculous. Don't you? Yeah, I know yeah. some, yeah. I know some so smart is scary, you know? And we were like that. See, back then, we were capable of using close to 100% of our brain capacity. Right now, what we use 10, even our smart people might use 12. But I'm saying, <laughs> Back then, can you imagine mm -hmm. the levitations and the, all of this stuff that 
telepathy and all of that stuff that can come with the with knowing how to use the greatest computer ever invented our brains the greatest computer ever you know we don't know how to use it. We built pyramids and bumped our heads and forgot how we did it. Yeah. See? So, yeah. so, so what we're seeing and what we already know that we are a smart people. We are smart people and we got to let the children know who they are. They That's don't right. know who they are. That's right. So we got to stop glorifying and game banging. We got to quit glorifying uh, I have seen this now, and I'm, I'm talking on the local level now. I'm talking not what I heard, but what I've seen on a video right in this town. That yeah. They videoing me uh, fights and game banging. They videoing that and putting it all over the world now. It's well, glor it glorifying in that. Well, and they're working. You got to understand. They're working. See, when those videos get so many views, they get a check. Yeah. You know, see, they're working. That's that part of what they call working smart. See, but it's to our detriment that, mm -hmm. that, that they're working smart. See, they'll go out and look for fights to fend. Mm -hmm. They love that kind of stuff. They will do that. And, but, they're making money off of those videos. See, we didn't think about it. Well, it wasn't out when we were there, but I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. They're making money off of violent videos, the fight videos, the, the twerk videos. And, you know, man, nobody's telling these people that God put all of his most precious treasures, he buried them, didn't he? Then he covered up you just can't walk up and just pick up a diamond, can you? You have to look for it. You yeah. can't. Huh? Yeah, the, you have to. The most precious resources. You can't go out to a lake of oil. You got to dig for that stuff. You got, he covered up his greatest creations. He covered it up. The black woman, his greatest creation. We gotta start covering them up. We gotta we gotta start covering them up. See, they are snatching fences. They're snatching. I, I know, I know, man. I'm way off topic, but I'm just saying all of this goes into the confusion of why do we have the black on black crime? Mm -hmm. Because see, we're not we we stop taking care of our women. Do you know? that the milk, the breast milk of a black woman is got 10 times more nutrients than a black, than a white woman. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. 10 times, that's why we used to breastfeed their children. You never seen one of us breastfeeding not one of them. That's why, I, that's why we have so many missing black girls because they are taking our girls and they are kidnapping them and they are taking their uterus. Nobody thinks about stuff like that. They are doing this stuff to us because, man, we were one of God's first creations. Mm -hmm. You know, he gave us everything. He gave us the ambidextrous hair. You know, man, I can wear a ponytail or I can wear an afro. I can wear braid anything you want to do to your hair. You can't do that, Mac. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm just saying, we got everything. We got the melanin. You know, we run faster. You know, they had some girls in the Olympics that were running so fast. Do you know they went and gave them a gender test? Mm -hmm. See, how in the world you get somebody to run this fast because that's who we are. See, we we are the aliens that okay. everybody keeps talking. Oh man, they got the aliens. They had the long heads. I know a whole tribe of Africans that's got the elongated skulls. How much you saying that, Doc? Yep. Yep. The elongated. Come on, man. We were all with, we are the aliens. That's why they worked so hard and 
in conjunction to tear this race of people down. And hey, we helping them. You know, we helping them. We are them. because we, 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 we fail to realize that we are smart. Number we one. Are. Number two, whatever we get involved in, we turn out to be the great at that too. So you don't like that as athletes, we are great at that. They didn't want us to do complete the sports. And then they found the minute you tell them that, oh, black people can't swim. So now we got them swimming in the Olympus, but yet we can't swim. See? But like I said, we can't swim. We lie long enough, people start to believe it. Oh, we can't dive. We have one diving. We have some people diving this year. Things that they say that we can't do, we can do. Yeah, yeah see. So we got to get past that mentality of not listen to this other voice. Right. But we got to listen to the voice of God. We got to listen. We get that to our young people. We got to get them back. We got to get God in there somehow, though. They don't even in order In order to show, God, in order for us to change that little mindset. And once they realize who they are and where they come from, but like I said, in school, you're not going to get black history in school. No, no. See, my kids, I taught my kids. I, every summer, we made all kids go to the library, look up a black, somebody black, read about them, and then write us a book report. See that? Look. Because we know they, they're not teaching in school. Even when I was in school, they, I've been one of my English teachers. She's dead now, but I was going to do my paper on Martin King Jr. I said, oh, no, you can't do it on Martin King Jr. because there's not enough books about him. I want you to do it on George Washington or even Abraham Lincoln. I said, no. I said, I'm doing it on Martin Luther King Jr. Right. And I found information on him. And I did my book on Martin King Jr. Right. See, that's what I'm saying. It's a lot of these kids don't know. I'm, I'm here in Union Springs. And do you know, I know you've heard of Dr. John Henry Clark. Mm -hmm. John he was born right here in Union Springs. These kids don't know that. If they really knew who they were, they would stop acting a fool. If they really knew that we are we one of the seven tribes of Israel, mm -hmm. they, they don't know anything about that. See, they thinking that everything stopped at, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. You can't even hardly say Jesus around them because you get deaf ear. See, mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta trick them into God. I'm just telling you the truth. You gotta trick them and you gotta show the power that they have, but they gotta concentrate, you know, they gotta concentrate. Now, all of this play, 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 play. It, it, it's okay, but the kids really gotta know who we are. They don't yeah. know. They they really don't know now. Everybody, don't get me wrong. Everybody wasn't a king, and everybody wasn't a queen. You just come from that blood. Yeah. <laughs> everybody wasn't a king, cause you can't have everybody be a king. You just come from kings. Your bloodline somewhere. If you dog, if you black, somewhere along our genealogy. We there was royalty. Royalty, yes. But they mixed us up like they mixed us up like a bowl of soup. <laughs> and see, the kids don't know this. They think uh, we always got to be down. We always got to be hurt. We always got to be broke. That's how they're thinking because of that lie that's been told for centuries. Mm -hmm. And now we're playing generational catch up, and it's just. Like, and it's gonna take guys, it's gonna take brothers like you. Yeah. It's gonna take brothers like you mm -hmm. to get us back to where we need to be. The kids, it's the children, man. We can't wait until after they graduate high school and try to wake them up. Mm -hmm. We gotta get them now while oh. they're young. Yeah. Because that's what the, if we don't, man, they're gonna give them, um, they're gonna give them that, uh, that little therapy, you know, the little therapy, the puberty blockers. Come on, man. Yes, and I, I want to thank you for that, Chili. But I want to got, we got about 10 more minutes before we had to get out, get, get out of here. But uh, I want to talk about this a little bit that how we sell each other out is part of this in black on black crime. 
We sell each other out. How do we sell each other out? Now, I have noticed and have watched that some of us, not all, but some, have took a cookie from my white brothers and sisters and sold their whole neighbor food out because of a cookie or a piece of candy. Now, what are you talking about a cookie and a piece of candy? I would sell $100 uh, just to be able to speak at a one of your associations. Yeah. So I sold you out just do that. And I know it was wrong, but I'm so selfish. And all I'm thinking about is myself. Exactly. And that's a part of you can enjoy that black on black crime, not only physical, but mentally. It's selfishness, man. Go on, Doc. Yeah, you have you selling out. Thinking that, well, if I sell out to them, they're going to come in and do this. Mm -hmm. But yet, what they do is they come in to explore our people. Mm -hmm. We're not, and they're not bringing that in to give us. It's to afford their own ideology onto us. Mm -hmm. And so until we can recognize that, hey, let's, let's not sell out. Let's bring in our own. Because who knows more about black people than black people? That's right. That's right. So if you don't want to bring your own in, like I said, it goes back to that willy nilly theory. Yeah. So yeah. If, said, if I can get them to distrust one another, mistrust one another, mm -hmm. that they will fight among themselves. That's I it. Can That's it. Hold. You see, as long as we are fighting amongst ourselves, nothing's ever going to get done. Right. It's until, we, right. it's until we realize that, look, we got to trust one another. Mm -hmm. There's got to be some trust. And we start just trusting one another. We start getting on kids. And see, kids react to what they see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can yeah, see a whole lot of stuff. That's fun. So they sit there and they're watching you and say, well, you're telling me this, but you're doing that. But you're doing that. Mm -hmm. So how can you expect me to? To, uh, to do something that you're telling me when you're doing the opposite of what you're telling me to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And, and, go ahead. Go ahead, Chili. That's it, man. You hit it right on the head. Because kids are sponges. They're sponges. Whatever they see, that's what they, that's what they know. And mm -hmm. see, all, all we've been showing our kids are I got mine, you better get yours. Mm -hmm. See, I got mine, you better get yours. I did this, I did this, yeah, but see, the times were different. Our thought process were different than these kids. See, these kids, you can easily influence them just like that. You can influence them on something just like that, whether it's good or it's bad. Mm -hmm. The bad resonates quicker with them, you know? But you always got to trick them, man, because they, they are, they are in their only world, you know, and the drive by, that's a coward, you know, that's coward move. But mm -hmm. then again, like I say, if they get instruction to go out and do something, they're going to do it. They're going to do it now. <laughs> if they get instruction to go out and shoot up somebody's house, they're going to do it. And see, we got to catch them before we got to offer just as much love and brotherhood as the gang, if, the, if that makes any sense. See, that's the word you just said. Kids are looking for love. They're looking for love. And so if we ain't offering them love, they're going to find love someplace else. Find love. Be with the gang yeah. or not, yeah. they're going to find it because they're, they're not getting it at the house. They're not getting it at the house, man. And yeah, they think, the thing with the new generation that we want to put the kids down in front of this computer, and this is their babysitter. That's their babysitter. All that's this app, all the phone. You get them the phone, they sit there on the phone, they play all these games on this phone. And that's a babysitter. This kid know more about this phone than I do. How to get around this phone. 
I'm talking about small <laughs> kids. Small kids, yeah, I'm talking about ain't even yeah. in high, ain't even in first grade yet. Yeah, go on the phone kids. and find a video and listen to it. They can get around it so they can get around yeah. it so easy. But see, we got to put the right stuff in front of them, man. See, all we do, we think we're doing the right thing because we don't want we want them to live better than we did. We want them to have more than we did. And see, we messed our kids up because the old saying, we spared the rod, you know? We spared the rod and gave the kids power to call the police and put your butt in jail if you discipline them. Mm. That was a mistake. Mm -hmm. See, that was a mistake. They let the kids be able to call and get the parents put in jail or even just harassed just for discipline them and you know we lost them right then y'all we lost them so matt the best thing i can tell you about the black on black crime is to do like doc was saying we got to get up committed we got to pick the right times when to go and visit these mm -hmm. areas with those kids and don't go in there preaching first go in there with some no. music go in there with some music <clears throat> go in there with that music blast and they don't, you automatically mm -hmm. got their attention. See, you automatically got their attention. If you put the music with the subharmonic lows on, you got their undivided attention. But you're only going to have it for a little while. So you got to come correct when you do have that attention quick. If not, they're going to shut it down on you. Okay. Thank you, Cook. We got two more minutes, and I'm going to turn the rest of the two minutes into uh, Dr. James Hill, and I want you to wrap it up, Dr. Hill. As you're saying, the thing is, we only got a short period of time with these young people nowadays because, like I said, they, the time span is very quick. You got yeah. to stick with them, and you can't spend a whole lot of time there. So you go into the neighborhood, like I said, you got to meet them where they are. Yeah. Can't go in and preach to them like like I said. He told said you you can't eat the fish until you clean it. You see, so until you go in there and clean it, and you got to catch it, you got to clean it, and go from there. Right. You try to go in there, you try to preach to them right off the top. Like I said, they're gonna turn you off just like that. <laughs> Not gonna so, work. As I said, the light's gonna go out as soon as you start trying to preach to them. So that we don't want to try to just preach to them first. You you got to go in and talk to them first. Figure out where they are. That's right. And then meet them where they are. And then you think about about Jesus. Jesus always met the, the people where they were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And then he got the word to them after that. But you got to meet them where they are. Right. Amen. Right. That's the only way to get them, Doc. Amen. I want to thank both of you all for coming on this afternoon as my guest. And we I think this has been wonderful. And we need to not just only have one conversation of these this kind of uh, Part on this podcast, there's many more conversations that we need to, to have just to help up, help our people in general. Because we we about to lose a, a generation, y'all. You know, uh, and your young folks are coming up. They, they they sometimes some of them is coming up like growing up like wild weeds. Nobody mm -hmm. cultivating them that they're growing up and doing whatever they want to do. So we got to do something. Now, somebody, well, it ain't my child, but I don't care if it's not your blood child. You should be, we should be concerned about all any child. All of them. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. And see now, Mac, I'm going to tell you, man, I appreciate you doing this. Um, I think the next time that you talk about black on black crime, I think you need to have a game number in there. Yes. Yes. And I, 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 I can I, see a game. I'm a sitting cross from Doc over there right now. Yeah, you remember either somebody was in a game. Yeah. Somebody that was in a game, you know. Yeah. We need you need one of those on there and get the thing, get the story from the the know if somebody's in a game, because that way you can get the idea of what they are thinking. Yes, yes. That's making they'll sense. tell you what they're thinking. Yes, that's making sense. sense. That's making sense. That's what I'm saying, but see what. I think that'll be worth you trying one time, though, Matt. Yes. You know, it'll be cool if you could get somebody that's in the game and somebody that got out of the game. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. What, you know? Whatever it takes to, to turn things around. Yes. 
Exactly. Whatever it takes. Okay, thank you, thank you all. Uh, it's several one for all the time. But I'm gonna again, I'm gonna thank you all, and I want to want y'all have the best rest of the afternoon in Virginia, right? And also yep, in Virginia. <laughs> Also in Union Spring, right? Yes, sir. Yes. So y'all had a best time. So thank y'all, and we will see y'all later. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. All right, Doc. It was great meeting you, man. Great meeting you too, brother. All right.